Hello and welcome to the Photography Salon um, with the magnificent uh, Ilkan Franz. We are, ah! <laughs> yeah. uh, we're live here on Zoom and we are also on Instagram Live and we're also on Facebook. Before we're on Facebook, I have to press go live. So, yeah. A multi-channel live broadcast. Yes, we're all over the planet. Facebook, Instagram Live, um, and Zoom. Gosh, where are we uh, <laughs> uh, Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. You're beginning to 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 pop in now. Um, welcome to the conversation, uh, the photography salon, in conversation with Ilka and Franz. Um, those of you who do know Ilke and Franz's work, I hope you're as excited as me to hear what motivates them, what's behind their remarkable and vastly entertaining style. And I hope you're looking forward to hearing how they have achieved, what they've achieved in such a short, short space of time. So Ilke and Franz, welcome. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, first question I want to ask you, is uh, you're a duo, you're a photographic duo. Um, it's not common, um, in fact, it's very rare. Mer Marcus is the, the other photographic duo that springs to mind. Mm -hmm. um, now, you're, you're, you're also partners in your, in your personal life. You're, you're, you're a couple and you work together under this title of Ilkay and Franz. Um, I want to. I, I kind of want to ask you, how is that? But that's that's all you've known as photographers, so I suppose it's just normal. But um, how do you manage it? Do you have individual roles in each project? Does one of you have a role in general that is more production or more creative? Tell me how you how you split the roles in in any one project. Um. So we try to kind of both do everything. So we kind of make a point of both being able to do everything and also we swap roles a lot. Yeah. Um, but I guess there are certain areas where, you know, personal interests go in a certain direction. So there's a tendency, for example, that, I don't know, maybe I do more colors, a bit more like on the retouching side. Franz is great with lighting and stuff like that. Or, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it also depends on uh, the project and how yeah. involved we are with other stuff at the time. I guess uh, we have like two big uh, fields that uh, I do and that you do. I do like the accounts and you do other stuff. And uh, yeah, so I guess uh, in a way, when it comes to the creative, we kind of try always to bounce between each other, like back and forth. And someone has an idea, and then the other person kind of feels that uh, there's something to be added to that idea, for example. And so it kind of bounces back and forth quite a bit, right? When it comes to the creative process, at least. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's definitely always a lot of discussion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But we try to have everything discussed kind of before we go to a shoot. Okay. So, but in the process, you know, while we work on concepts and prepare everything, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like different ideas, and definitely also like <laughs> yeah. some conflict and stuff. But it's good because I don't know, especially to, so today we've been working on a project, personal project, and I tend to be really impatient. I kind of get ahead of myself, and I want to ideally do it tomorrow or already be done tomorrow. And Franz is the one who then comes and says, actually, let's revisit like the early stages and make sure everything is right. So that's in that way it's yeah. really good that we are we kind of complement each other in that way. Yeah. 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 And then also because we do re the retouching ourselves and we like to be involved in the many aspects of our work, like the styling, the set design, um, everything really. We like to control everything. <laughs> <laughs> in that sense, it's also good that it's the two of us because I think otherwise. I mean, that's how I imagine it. If you're just one person, you maybe have to let go of some things a bit more because there's just not enough time. I mean, even we feel that sometimes. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when the scale of projects uh, get bigger, then I guess uh, 
you just have to give things away to make it work in a way, right? Yeah. Within the given timeline at least. So, yeah. 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 It's it, as a, as a as somebody who's who is not part of a duo. It is. Um, you're right. Uh, when, when you're on your own, you everything's on you, and just having somebody who you know you can trust uh, and you who who you share aesthetic values with and yeah it can be it can be there can be a lot of pressure when you're on your own and as yeah. much as it, it, i'm sure it at times will create conflict for you both having that sounding board and having that support from the other side um yeah uh, I, can, I can see how there would be advantages in it yeah i mean uh, what uh, makes this uh, kind of scenario a little bit easier for us is that i think overall we kind of have uh, a similar taste in things yeah. So, it, it, like the big picture will always be like kind of will always have a, like a similar feel, and then we only like really touch base in the small details and kind of I don't know. Yeah, but it also yeah. means that we sometimes like every few months we have like a big picture conversation about what we want and stuff, because that's sometimes that's important that we kind of head in the same direction there. So yeah, yeah, that also happens. But yeah, what you just said also reminded me that, um, you know, on, on set and when you have a client situation, the, in that kind of scenario also really value having France there because it takes the edge off a little bit. You know, if, when you have a moment where you don't know, you know, you're not sure, you don't feel inspired suddenly, you always have somebody to fall back on. And that's often when, you know, we often say to each other, mm, not sure right now, take the camera. And then the other one, you know, feels more inspired that yeah. moment so <laughs> yeah, it must be hard to be on your own when that happens I and mean, it must be hard to push through this kind of low energy kind of phase you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean that's that's so much of your role as a photographer is to, is to for you too is to keep things moving and to keep the keep the mood upbeat and, and keep the client happy whatever try and work out what's going to make them happy and then you have to be working on that do you, so do you find that one of you is more client facing than the other? Ooh, well, maybe I'm, uh, <laughs> maybe I'm in, the, in the crowd. Maybe I'm a, a, I tend to be a bit more entertaining than Elkes, or I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe I grew up that way. <laughs> I don't know. I just want I things to get done. Yeah. And but that's good because I, I know that I can be a bit like the stricter one. Yeah. <laughs> France is a bit more the friendly one. <laughs> but I guess we've also learned that it doesn't really matter how nice you are on set, as long as the outcome is good, then everything is forgiven afterwards. Yeah. 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 Um, how, how does it feel for you? Sorry, sorry. Again. How does it feel? How does it work for you? Do you kind of uh, build up that kind of trust aspect with like your first assistant, or do you have some person, like a, a, a person in your life that kind of Acts a little bit like a partner in your photography. What I'll tend to do is I'll I'll engage a producer um, who who and I try and keep them with the client as much as possible. Yeah, I, I, clients are really fatiguing, as you know, and you know, being a few years further on than than you guys presently in your career, I I, I just I, you kind of get to the stage where you're not you you know that you're not doing what the client wants to hear because you just your patience and your I don't know you, I'm developing into a slightly grumpy old man but <laughs> that comes worse with with clients who yeah. as we all know sometimes can't really communicate what they actually want and will ask for things that just can't be done and stuff like that so in in the interest of somebody staying somebody staying polite and kind and gentle and calm I try and put a producer between me and the client. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I, we, I thought that a duo would be a source of a lot of uh, fighting. But, yeah, I can really see how you've got each other's back. You've, you've absolutely got someone in the room with you who has your back. So, uh, yeah, and we try not to fight in front of clients. <laughs> we keep that for our spare time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Although maybe if some clients are watching right now, they'll be like, I've seen a fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but can it ever be a fight if it's a creative oh, argument? At least bitter. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just on the subject of you being a duo, um, 
Jean Marco actually posted the question when he was registering for the talk. Uh, how did you meet? Is, is it relevant to your professional life? Did you meet in a professional capacity or did you, did you literally bump into each other? We to... met at a house party. <laughs> but uh, our ambitions were kind of the same. Yeah. So that kind of, uh, yeah. I think just a few weeks later, I, I wanted to like do a little photography project with a friend of mine and then Franz offered to help me. And that's kind of the very beginning. Yeah. Purely out of professionalism, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and also, yeah. we did some terrible pictures. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> but uh, oh well, that was then and uh, now it is now, so yeah, yeah. We've, we've evolved. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. Oh, I can help you with your photography. <laughs> <laughs> No. So yeah. the, the, you, your visual aesthetic is instantly recognized, instantly recognizable. Were, were either of you moving in that direction before you worked together, or is this something that, that, that it was when you came together that suddenly it was there? Um, no, we definitely developed it together. And our first, so we did lots of different stuff at the beginning. And our very first portfolio was also, I mean, maybe many photographers have that. So it was basically all over the place. We did like some uh, lifestyle photography, some studio stuff, some yeah. fashion stuff. We did uh, quite a few business portraits just to survive, just yeah. to make it in the photography world, yeah. But then we also did portraits that were really kind of, we basically invited people to visit us and we made them sit in front of a color rama in a really stiff and controlled way yeah. and we combined those with objects quite often or with like the beginnings of little concepts yeah okay um and that was kind of the beginning and then we once had a um portfolio review and um an art buyer said that that's that's the only thing in the portfolio that is interesting to have everything else is really crap <laughs> <laughs> which is the, you know yeah. that's really painful but that's the kind of feedback you need to then move yeah. forward yeah yeah so then we continued more in that color direction and portraits, I guess. And then at, uh, at a point we thought, uh, why not uh, do some still lives and treat them similarly? And uh, yeah. that uh, ended up being those kind of empty, but very clearly defined spaces and yeah. still lives. Yeah. Because we, only, because we only had like a person sitting in front of a color armor before. And uh, yeah, we treated it the same. We only wanted one object and made, uh, tried to make the best out of one object, really, right? That was kind of, yeah. So you, um, I think of you as still light photographers. We, uh, I, we, we, and, and I've noticed in your, in your bio and you, you've referred to yourself as portrait photographers. Um, uh, uh, would you, Obviously, you would say, if we were in company, I would introduce you as this is Oak and Franz, they are outstanding still life photographers. Is, is that fair? Is that who you want to be perceived as? Is that, are you comfortable with that? No, no, the official line is always that we like, we like photographing everything. And that's really true. Um, as long as we can kind of put it in our Ilk and Franz world, it doesn't really yeah. matter if it's a person or an object. And uh, um, I mean, I get, uh, I, I think you, you also get uh, by looking at our work that we kind of treat uh, people still as objects and not like we don't want to portray the livelihood or like the spontaneousness of people so much. It's more like planned and we, we really have an idea in our mind before we shoot something, right? Yeah. 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 It's in a way, it's very similar. So we still, it's quite painful, I think, for our models because they have to sit really still and move really slowly. And we come and like change little details like you would in a still life. <laughs> yeah. They um, might, uh, some, of, some of them might get upset with us or we had that the, the mood was a bit, yeah, but so well, <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. Um, Isn't it interesting when you, when you have a specific idea with a model, you know exactly how you want them. And you're always almost treating them like a mannequin. Yeah. Because models want to move. They want to. They want to work. 
So I know exactly what you felt. And it's like, yeah. no, stop that. Just no, no, just stay there. No, no. Why did you move your hand? Just stay there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I know. I understand. I always, I've, I've actually said to you before, I always feel when I look at your work that people get in the way of what, of what you do. I, I, I adore your still lines. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not in any way a criticism. And I understand the the desire to photograph people, but um, your humor, when you work with ob objects, when you work with objects and you, <coughs> um, my vocabulary is failing me, but when you, uh, when you do what you do, I, it's, uh, it's adorable. But as yeah. soon as I see your pictures with people, I think, no, 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 still no. <laughs> That's so yeah. interesting. Yeah, I, I, for example, really like it, uh, like the, the portrait we did for the Guardian, like Ruby Tondo, she was at the Bake Off, and there her personality really becomes this like porcelain figure almost, you know, she becomes an object, and I, yeah. I adore that in the picture, that she's like that perfect, and she's sitting that still, and you can really see, I, I don't know, it's, uh, it's not uh, lively anymore, it's like frozen, a human frozen in place, yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like the fact, you know? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. also often it's combined, like the movie portrait, yeah. there we have like, she's surrounded, she's like coming out of a table and she's surrounded by ice cream, like Sundays. Yeah. So it's kind of still life meets portrait in a way. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. also, the just plain portraits, that's, some, that's kind of a relic from, when we started and we still get commissions for it, that's why we still do it in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what we like is kind of conceptual work that combines people with still life. Yeah. Yeah. Juxtaposition. So, that was the word I was looking for earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I just say to everyone who has, who has joined us on Zoom and indeed if you're with us on uh, Instagram Live, please send us questions. This is your chance to ask Ilka and Franz really exciting stuff like what's your favorite color, uh, what camera do you use and no yeah. please, please send us questions this is as much about you uh, in conversation with open friends as it is as it is for me um um now you franz you're austrian yeah Ilka, you're german um all of your success has come about here uh, in london um could you, and obviously you met in London, so there's no question of you doing what you did back home, so to speak. Could you, could you have achieved the success you have in Austria, Germany? And, and, and do you think you would be able to uh, transplant what you do in the UK back, back home, so to speak? Is London really, is London really the place to to, to shine if you have a vision like you do? Yeah. I think, I mean, it's a complicated question and I think uh, uh, the way it was five years ago might not be entirely true now, you know? Yeah. Because also Berlin has changed, the German market has changed a little bit, but... Yeah. But yeah, we always felt like our opportunities were here because it feels like um, the, firstly, the creative world in London is huge. There are so many people to collaborate with. Mm. We won't spend a month in Berlin, oh, yeah. just as an example. Um, and we're like struggling to find set designers and stuff. And here you just have so many amazing people to collaborate with. That's one thing. And then we also always felt that here the kind of the creative industry always looks for new trends and new talent. That's a thing here. Yeah. You know, and people want to give new and fresh talent opportunities and that's we definitely benefited from that kind of culture because yeah. that's how you kind of gain experience in the beginning and mm. in germany it feels a little bit more like it's a bit more conservative and you have to make a name for yourself although i don't really know how it works in practice how you make a name for yourself yeah, within, without getting those important opportunities when you're still new yeah but yeah we've, because we have a german agent and we know that we have lost some jobs to some quite old school photographers, although we were really a bit more fitting. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, we kind of have this feeling that it's a bit more conservative and based yeah. on yeah. just having a name for a long time already. Yeah. There's no doubt with London that um, 
I think doors are open, far more open in London than they are, for example, in Paris. I don't know the German market, but certainly the French market, uh, yeah, is is impenetrable and 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 it and very difficult for 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 young women to achieve professional success in their twenties. London, I think, has an if if you're good enough you're old enough it doesn't it really doesn't matter what, what what age you are or what your experience is if you're good enough you get it which, which is refreshing but it's a vastly 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 uh, competitive industry and, and I and I you know I watch your work you know I adore you and I, and I do love your work but the, the thing that you just said could could in a way work against you that, that yes you 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 kind of exploded in 2016 you, you have to sustain that and it's it's it, the, the industry is always looking for a new approach a new approach a new approach um but you, so yes it's a good thing and a bad thing um yeah, yeah. but yeah that is interesting how we've talked about this mm -hmm. how you stay relevant and how you build a career over decades and kind of because also you don't want to start chasing trends or anything. You have to stay true to yourself and to your own vision, but also not in 10 or 20 years be completely irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that could be the industry. It could happen to anyone, really. So yeah. I don't know. I think uh, as long as you put a lot of energy into it, it might be something that comes out of it as well. So it's kind of uh, this scenario rather than anything yeah. else, I guess. But once you maybe start to look at things and take them too easy and uh, not uh, put enough effort into an individual assignment, then I guess that uh, could quickly backfire, I guess. Well, I do see, I mean, one thing that I see with your work um, <clears throat> is that uh, you guys are very successful and, 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 and those of you watching, you, you will be surprised how much of Elkin France is what you have seen in campaigns. Um, and I, I, it, is, it is easy to get so busy fulfilling well-paid commercial work. Uh, and well-paid commercial work tends to narrow your approach to what you actually want to do. And it's so easy to get, to just be doing that all the time and getting narrower and, narrow and, and, and forgetting those wonderful things you did for their own sake yeah. um, that, that, that created yeah. success. It, it's really yeah. important, and I say this to every photographer that you, you find the time just to express yourself. Yeah, your voice is so clear. You, the way the way you visually speak. And yeah, we we also kind of set ourselves this rule to try to treat every shoot as a portfolio shoot or as a potential portfolio shoot. It's not always easy, but uh, at least uh, I think that kind of uh, pushes you a little bit into the right direction. Yeah. and uh, then we also don't shy back from. I mean, editorials are a great way of uh, doing stuff that you would really want to do, even though they, they are not paid or not well paid most of the times. Uh, but I guess that's also like a, a brilliant uh, approach to shoot more stuff that you really want to shoot. Yeah. And also, so remember a conversation that we have. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Archie, do you have any questions for Oka and Franz? Hi, Archie. Hello. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> He, he can see out the window, so he's quite happy. Yeah, yeah that's more interesting. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, we had a conversation, I think, at the end of last year when we were kind of talking about what we want 2020 to be like. And that was when we realized that we hadn't been properly creative for a very, very long time. So we said we definitely want to do personal projects again in 2020. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as, you know, has, as things have developed this yeah. year. we've had plenty of time to do that yeah that's true <laughs> it, it, yeah. It's, it's almost it's almost like we rehearsed that um i've got a couple of questions from uh from people who have joined us and, and i'm going to ask them next actually i've got yeah. the same question twice but that's very interesting that you are we are all in lockdown um and i it is the time to explore creativity and to create your own projects. And, and I, I, I asked Elk and Franz before we, before we sent the broadcast live, if they would share something with us, because they, they have both been working on a, a personal project. Um, uh, no. Franz is a frustrated actor, I understand, and he- Yeah, it's quite a shocker. It's, it's quite into, a shocker. Um, 
so, so the guys are very, very, very kindly going to give us a premiere of uh, the latest video project we've worked on. I haven't seen this. I've only seen the opening uh, card, which I think many of you will have seen on uh, Instagram as a little teaser. So we practice screen sharing. So I think Ilka, or Franz, is going yeah. to screen share with us. Okay. I'm okay. um, in a very high what, tech way going to point my phone at my computer screen. I'm so just thinking, did, can people hear the music? Well, well, we'll find out uh, okay. in a second. Okay. Yeah. So this might not work. Let's see. Okay, uh, honest feedback afterwards, please. Oh, God. <laughs> honest feedback. Cool. Uh, ready to go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here you are, Instagram. It's loading. Nice bit of cool focus there. Really acting. <laughs> you suit that hat, Franz. <laughs> <laughs> Franz, it looks bizarrely not like you at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think it fits the current moods, the lockdown moods. <laughs> I should have asked, this isn't a one hour video or something, is it? No, no. two minutes. You poor guy. Beautiful. <laughs> I've not had dinner yet. This is making my stomach rumble. There you go, sausage fest. <laughs> I can see a, I can see a, I can see a campaign for um, yeah. vegan sausages <laughs> any month now on our TV screens. <laughs> for me as an actor or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, available. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's uh, what we have been up to. It's um, it was tricky because um, a very very. Uh, closed spaces and not a lot of working space that would that's what makes it the most tricky i think and, yeah. Uh, yeah basically yeah. when lockdown started we were thinking firstly i mean what you know you, we were not expecting any kind of commission so yeah. you need to do something with your time yeah. so we tried quite desperately to find ideas but then all the ideas that were already kind of in the making you need a studio or a set or a model all this kind of stuff that suddenly was unavailable. Yeah. So we kind of stripped it back to the bare minimum, like a curtain, a table, and one of us. Yeah. Um, and luckily we have our own camera and we've got two constant lights. So yeah, it's just experimenting really. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well done, well done. And fans <laughs> got to wear later hosen. You must have been bursting to wear your I was, <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, as you can see in the video, I, I was really confident and proud of myself. It was great, a great experience, yeah. 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 Well, well done, well done, well done. But uh, honestly, I, I would recommend it to everyone. Uh, uh, buy some cheap used lights on eBay, set them up in your personal space and try something new, try something. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've, I, I my, uh, my little new toy is CGI. I've been busily working away trying to trying to bring together photography and CGI. You look really confused. You oh know. yeah, your audio just dropped out. We couldn't, we couldn't hear you. 
Oh, internet connect. Okay, but you're back. So. Yeah, it's fine. Did I did I disappear? Yes, for more. Just for a second, that was it. It was our internet, I think. It said that. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yes, no. My hat is off to you, uh, and uh, I hope. Uh, yeah, I hope everybody who's watching thinks. I mean that that little film worked brilliantly. Yeah, there are some nice uh, comments on Instagram. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Love yeah. the sausage feast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, oh, thanks, guys. NC <laughs> Nails wishes she'd done your nails. Yeah, I, I wish so too. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> um, so, how are you, so are you enjoying video? Because um, I'm interested in your step into video. Uh, I'm really interested in looking at that. That felt much more Ilka okay and Franz, and that, that fitted with you, for me personally, much more than when I see people in stills. That, that was really interesting. That was really <laughs> interesting. Um, why have you moved into video? Is that a commercial decision? Um, so we have actually, we've done kind of what we call moving image for a while, basically also because clients wanted it. Um, and we've often done shoots where we do stills and video at the same time, but um, we've always kind of used a DOP. Yeah. And yeah, then, you know, often clients want both, I guess. And um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and we, I guess we, so now we're more interested in, so what we did before was more kind of a moving version of our stills work. Yeah. And now we've started being a bit more interested in kind of the storytelling side of film, maybe slowly working our way towards a short film, maybe. Okay. And the other thing is that we want to learn more ourselves. So this whole dynamic with the DOP, although it's great for commercial shoots and stuff, but I quite like knowing myself what we want, yeah. knowing exactly what they talk about. And What's achievable, yeah. Yeah. just to, to, to have been there so you can judge a situation better. Yeah. I think that's what it's... So I think that's yeah. just the way we learn. We'd want to do it ourselves. Yeah. And then also it works better when we work with someone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, um, I was a bit hesitant at first. Franz was interested in it first. And I was a bit like, I, I prefer stills because I really like stills. It's, yeah. I like it, how you set up an image and you spend a long time on it and you make it exactly like you want. That's, I like that. And that you kind of can't do that so much in film, I guess. But now, I have I appreciate the way that you can use film to tell a story better. It's easier. So now now I'm also into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, you know, in a photo story, or at least when we we kind of try to do series like six pictures with a theme, mm -hmm. but you always have to explain it somehow. You always need like a line where you say, "Here, Ilka and Franz shot like." different foods or whatever and in a film you don't need that it's self-explanatory and i really like that now or rather uh unsensical uh, nonsensical or nonsensical <laughs> yes <Yeah>. <laughs> but people get it yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but something i realized from my own journey into and out of film is you can you you can only watch a film so many times you can actually live with a still photograph. You can, you, you know, you can, you can look at that again and again and again and again and again. Yeah, it's true. Um, and it's really interesting what you were saying about being able to tell a story in film as opposed to in a photograph. I, I don't know if I agree with you. I respect what you feel, but um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I want to check back in with you in a year's time about how how you feel about film because it, um, yeah, I did I did my time and I'm. I'm really glad I can do it. It would be great to come back to the photography room in a year's time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll be interested to hear how you, how, how you travel through film. Yeah. Um, so a cut, two people have asked fundamentally exactly the same question. Um, and we, 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 we touched on how to approach this, but I, I think people do want to know, um, where, do, where do you get your inspiration from? What, what are your references? So. I, I, I know, but um, for, the, for the viewers, 
where has this world come from? What, what are your inspirations and your references? Go on, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's really difficult to say because it can really come from anywhere. Um, and yeah, we kind of, we collect lots of different mood boards. So especially I really like screen, screen grabbing stuff, but that can be anything that could be, for example, we once did a series that was inspired by uh, internet memes that we saw. That's why we, on our, in our bio, I think we reference pop culture because it can be something really trivial. Yeah, and it's also really trashy. I think uh, the trashier, the better sometimes even. Sometimes <laughs> like the worst things, uh, yeah, just inspire to do something amazing, you know, it's, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 But yeah, I've also noticed that often our kind of projects are led by like something that is a bit language related. Like we did this project that was called Bottomless Brunch, where one of the pictures is um, a woman sitting, having brunch with no trousers on. So sometimes it can be something like that, just mm. like, oh, bottomless brunch. What can you do with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like a, a phrase or something that you can then spin and turn it around and just basically break it about, analyze it, and then put it together in some sort of way that shouldn't be. Something like yeah, that, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, Lovely. Was bottomless brunch, was that something you did for yourselves? Or was that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and Halia Corti has, has asked wh when she registered, um, uh, I, I love this because the question is almost, what is your favorite color? Uh, but it's, it's, what is your favorite color combination? And I think it's quite good because you have a lot of pink and yellow and uh, you, you color flash quite a lot. And what, mm. what, what makes you smile when you see it? Mm. First of all, the question is very mean. <laughs> mm. we, we definitely go through phases, that's for sure. There was a green and pink phase. And the plan was actually that I wear today uh, pink, uh, orange lipstick and the background was meant to be pink, but we changed it because okay. pink and orange. Yeah, yeah. Definitely into a good color clash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So green and pink, green and orange is nice. Yeah. But it, it changes, right? Uh, I think uh, favorite colors, they're always kind of colors define uh, how projects come together. But then after, uh, after the project is done, you want to do something different again, right? So you try to find another color palette that kind of does the same to you. That's, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I really want to ask you this question because it's something that, uh, I'm really interested in and I'm interested in your answer. Um, you've got a really impressive list of award successes um, since I, th I think on your website the, 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 you started winning awards around 2015 and it yeah. just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Silver medalist, gold medalist, finalist, highly recommended. Um, do you feel that awards are an important component part of the, the recipe for achieving commercial success? Um, I think it's definitely a good way to get some feedback, although it's also an expensive way to get some feedback. <laughs> um, but you know, we've never felt that it gives you the, it has definitely not like given us any breakthrough moments, but it probably, it adds like a, bit of a um, seal of approval or something. It builds trust, I guess. But I don't know, how do you feel? Do you feel that one of your awards has really, you know, really given you a boost? I think it's, I think it's subliminal. I think that we, that we uh, subliminal may be the wrong word, but I, I, I entered awards and was, was reasonably successful. Um, and we all, well, a lot of people enter the IPAs and the PX3 and these different and I kind of entered them and got, got slightly pissed off if I didn't actually win or, or thought, oh, that's great when I won and put it in my signature. I never really thought about it again. But what I didn't really notice is that, is that I think a lot of art buyers, um, and now that I'm in this sort of gallery world, I think a lot of galleries that, and, and art buyers, I think they really watch those awards. And I, and I know that a lot of galleries, they'll, they'll see who won the IPA whatever category and they'll approach them to represent them and, and okay. I, I think it, i think it's 
and they, they may not say that. They may not say, oh, I, won, I saw you won this award, but that is where they found your name. And yeah. I, mm-hmm. I begin to feel that it, it is, it's, it's much more a positive than you think, because you say, oh, I won a silver or gold in the IPA. No one appears to care. <laughs> Yeah, but I do think it helps to just lift you above the the crowd just a little bit. Um, yeah. The water announced. Um, yeah. But I, and I th- I think it's I think for a lot of photographers seeing that the, the, you've won so many awards or so and so has won so many awards, these awards people don't come and find you and give you them because they think you're great. It's, it, you you have to make a conscious effort to look at the deadlines and enter and and act and and pay the money too. Um, but yeah, I think I, I, I was just interested when I saw you had so many. I think it's a, I think for a photographer, it's a positive thing. Yeah, we are, we are finalists in the AOP awards this year, yeah. which is very exciting. The yeah, first time. Yeah, yeah. Very good. The AOP awards, people used to travel, agencies used to travel from all over the world for, for the, 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 the awards night. I don't think there is an awards night anymore. It was a, there is an exhibition that we yes. are in. in I we think, think there will also be an, like an opening night. Okay. I, but I think it's not before September, and God knows, you know. Yeah, I don't know. it will actually happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck. Good luck. I'm sure you'll, I'm, I'm sure you'll do well. Um, how are we doing for time? We have to close in about 10 minutes because we all have to go on a cloud for the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, another very industry focused thing that I wanted to ask you about and it's come up a few times in the photography salon where different photographers have different approaches to agency representation. Now you are I know represented by Horton Stevens in the UK. I don't know who your German agent is. Um, uh, How 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 important is that? How important is that to you? Do you feel that do you feel that you're more successful because you're with such a good agent? I mean, Horton Stevens are fantastic. I, I am. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you feel that did did they help you to climb faster, climb more steeply? We we definitely get work through Horton Stevens contacts for sure. And also, I think what's really crucial is that the workload is a bit more balanced because they take on workload that otherwise as a, as a photographer without an agent you couldn't cope with at the time. So I guess it makes you, yeah, yeah, yeah when you're busy, puts you in a better they, place. Yeah, 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 it's good to have somebody to deal with all the kind of inquiries and negotiating and stuff while you are maybe, you know, often we are, for example, still retouching and that's when we need to be focused. Or we are at a shoot and then yeah. something happens. So it's, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, we also, I don't know, it's a tricky one because it also feels a bit like the industry still demands of photographers to have an agent, although it's a bit old fashioned because I don't know, maybe maybe a few decades ago, photographers were more kind of these technical or artist people who weren't also business people. But I think that has really changed. I think most photographers now also see themselves as running a business yeah. and loads of photographers are great at, you know, promoting their own work, mm. probably better than the agents, you know, just going by Instagram channels, for example. So I don't know. It's a tricky one. <laughs> I think, uh, well, in, in Germany, I think it's uh, far more restricted than it is here. So having an agent in Germany is uh, a lot more important than it is in the UK, I would say. Things are stricter in Germany than they are here. I can't believe. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> I think they are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Took a little while to me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. But uh, for sure. And uh, I mean, I guess once you are not as busy as you used to be, then I guess the the whole debate about having an agent would be become a different one, right? Yeah. But I also think that young photographers shouldn't think that getting an agent is your moment of a big break because it's yeah. it wasn't for us. No, it's it's the work that decides if you're busy or not. Yeah, it's and we went work. quite a long time without an agent, and yeah. that was fine too. So did you? Sorry, let me let me just explore that a little bit more. Were you were you trying to seek appointments with agents, actively approaching agents, and then presenting your work? 
getting the feedback, going back, amending your book, going back and re-presenting. Is that how you got agency representation? Um, we had, we once got approached and had like a short thing with a different agent that didn't work out though. And then we were without an agent for probably two years mm -hmm. oh. and kind of, but I think that's also a good exercise to kind of learn to deal with budgeting and all the production yourself. And then at some point we thought maybe a good next step could be to try and get an agent again. Yeah. So did you, so you, you proactively went out and approached agents rather than yes, yeah. you were asking to yeah, do yeah, yeah. work. Yeah. I, I'm asking these step-by-step -step questions for people who are watching who may be considering getting an agency representation. Yeah. Wondering how it works. I mean, I guess uh, our deciding factor was that we got this year and also that we thought our portfolio was more stylized. It was more like uh, where we wanted to be with it. And uh, yeah, we wanted maybe an additional person to A, give us feedback, but then B, also uh, give us like a, a good direction of where to go with it and uh, open the doors. Yeah, we also thought like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, the, I think a lot of brands, a lot of agencies love agents. And, and, I, and I kind of understand it because they act as a gatekeeper and they speak the same language. They understand the balance between agencies and photographic agents is, is, is a lovely thing. They both understand each other perfectly. And I, I, it's, I think a lot of photographers though sometimes get some of that feedback from agents. Too much negative feedback can, you don't know what to do because you're just getting told it's not good enough or you, you responded well by amending your book and taking it back. I just think for young photographers, it's important to know that this is the age of communication. And if, if, if it isn't working with the agent route, you're absolutely right, Ilka. It, you, you can do it yourself. Um, yeah. But uh, we got, uh, we got uh, turned away a couple of times uh, when we kind of seeked out. Like a, a couple of agents, we just didn't fit in their roster or they were looking for someone else. So we got neglected uh, neglect and uh, for someone who's starting out I think you just need to push through and get over that and just keep working and uh, yeah. eventually it will pan out for sure. Sometimes it's just not the right time but it's not looking for anyone. Yeah. I, I just noticed that Horton Stevens are actually watching us on Instagram. <gasps> I, think, I think you should just take a minute to say how wonderful Horton Stevens are. <laughs> well they are. You know that. <laughs> yeah. No, there's always like we we'll always have great, great fun at the Christmas parties. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, guys, what's next? Uh, I just love watching you. One one thing that I hope is going to be next is I, I have mentioned to you by the Motel Collection, which is how all this photography salon started again. I want to represent you, and we want to hang your work. And we, I, I honestly know that your work is going to cross over from commerce to the art world. I just want to go back very quickly. We only have a couple of minutes left, but I want to know what you think. Um, I see you as artists. I see you as artists who are the commercial world is saying, come over here and just shoot this car for us and stuff like that. I, 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 when, I was, when I was working commercially, I used to say, I'm not an artist, I'm a technician. I'm a technician. I provide what people want. How do you see yourselves? Are you artists or are you technicians? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't answer it because I, I don't know, I, I, it's such a, whew, but it's only with my personality. I'm uh, very, very self-conscious in a way, so I wouldn't dare to call myself an artist, for example. But I, I think w w the stuff that we are doing is uh, different and it's fun and uh, we put a lot of love into it. So I, I don't know what it is, you know, it's, uh, it's our life in a way. and. If you if you need to find a definition for our life, I don't know. It's up for everyone's interpretation. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Erika? Um, um. Yeah. Same. It feels wrong to call myself an artist, but we also kind of talk about technical photographers as if they are somebody else. Mm. So because for us it's so important what's in the picture and that we, you know, that we do our thing. Yeah. That's more important than how we get there. In a yeah. Way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can have exhibitions, and we're so so looking forward to the exhibition at your place, which uh, will be great. Yeah. yeah.
if 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 I can ever open the doors in my face. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I hope I, I know that we'll talk more and I hope that we find a positive way forward with that because to me you are artists. Uh, you're being distracted by the commercial world, but I, I see things in your work that I think is it just simply has critical value. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Well, <laughs> well, well done to both of you. Thank you. 2016 guys, these guys broke through that four years. It's um, be proud and recognize how far you've come and how quickly you've come. And it's, um, it's well deserved. Two of the gentlest, nicest, most humble, uh, loveliest people that I uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just uh, putting more butter on your bread. So, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> the only people who are nicer than you are all those guys at Holland Stevens. That, they are the only people who are nicer than you. <laughs> uh, right, what do you think, um, guys? We, it's time for us in the UK to go and applaud the NHS. I just yeah. want, I haven't blanked any questions. Marcus B, you asked about how did you end up going down the colour road. This interview will be online uh, on YouTube and our sites and stuff like that tomorrow. Elke and Franz did answer how they, they found their style. Um, oh, on Instagram, Jaina Minton says, you are my faves. You are the faves. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, uh, thank you. <laughs> we are back. Uh, I am back. Well, the salon is back. I don't think it's me that's going to be in the chair. It's going to be the lovely Vera who's going to be in the chair. Uh, in two weeks' time, which is the 21st of May, uh, speaking to and uh, being in conversation with the incredible Salvatore Vitali. Salvatore, I hope I pronounced your name properly. Um, he is a Swiss-based photographer and visual artist, filmmaker, and he really has an incredibly diverse, politically, socially motivated portfolio. Go and check him out. Sal Salvatore Vitali. He couldn't be more different from Elke and Franz or from what I do. He's another end of the spectrum uh, and he will be in the photography salon um, on the 21st of May. Elke and Franz, thank you again. Love you so Thanks much. Thanks so much for Hello chatting with us. Yes. Well, very, very, very soon. Yes. Uh, I think you might be up for an acting award at the BAFTA. Let's move on from all this photography stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank you for attending everyone. Elke and Franz, thank you so much. Everybody stay safe, stay and enjoy the piece and yeah, stay happy. Cool. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>